let us move towards the ayurvedic formulation now you are aware about what is mean by ayurveda what is the historical background of ayurveda how the medicines are being used for the treatment of diseases and disorders in the ayurveda we know the how the disease and disorder it is going to be diagnosed and furthermore we have discussed the various theories related with the ayurveda by considering all these things there are so many types of the preparations and formulations are being used to treat the diseases and disorders in the ayurveda so ayurvedic formulations which are made up of the crude drugs metals minerals heat oils etc these are being used to prepare the ayurvedic formulation these are classified into the solid liquid and semi solid form in a modern era you know that the dosage forms are being classified as the solid liquid and semi solid similarly in ayurveda also the formulations are being classified as solid liquid and the semi solid apart from this so many modern things are also being utilized for the preparation of ayurvedic formulation so the solid formulations uh, which are available in the ayurveda like anjan then the bhasma churnad gutikar and pispi these are the some of the solid formulations in the ayurveda then liquid formulations for example arkas aristas asavas quathas these are the some of the liquid preparation which are being used in the ayurveda then semi solid formulation like ghan uh, then uh, varti pakas then the malamas these are the some of the semi solid formulation let us move towards how these ayurvedic preparations are being prepared and how these are going to be standardized as you know that in the case of uh, modern dosage form there are so many ways are there by which we can standardize the formulation as the era which demands the standardization for the particular dosage form or particular formulation as you know that ayurveda it is having a this is a traditional system and and uh, the technology uh, which is not developed in the case of ayurveda and uh, there is a need to think about how to standardize the ayurvedic preparation so let us move towards the formulation preparation and standardization of aristas and asavas then gutikas churnas lehas and the varmas the first one that is the aristas so how the arista is being prepared generally the arista it is called as a fermented decoction all of you are aware about the infusions and the decoction isn't it so same type of concept has been utilized in the case of arista right that is known as the fermented decoction so according to bhav prakash samhita arista are defined as the formulations which are prepared with the use of a pakvasadha siddha earlier prepared that is the cooked medicine like a herbal decoction so simply you can say this is a definition which is given in the bhav prakash samhita but in a modern way we can say it as a simply fermented decoction or the herbal decoction these are being known as the arista so aristas are made by soaking the crude drug either in a powder form you know that the when we are we are going for the decoction whatever the herbal material is there it should be converted into the powder form as a fine particles or in the form of decoction in a solution of sugar or the jaggery to undergo the fermentation so after fermentation there might be formation of alcohol and uh, such a formulation it is being uh, clarified and furthermore used as a arista whatever the fermentation process is there 
in the case of aristar it is being carried out for approximately 7 days to 30 days means it is not more than one month in the case of hot weather uh, we are using 70 10 days fermentation procedure and in the case of uh, cold weather generally we are going for the 15 to 30 days period for the fermentation so during this fermentation process there is a generation of alcohol and whatever generated alcohol is there which facilitates the extraction of the active principle from the powdered material so active principles are going to be extracted into the liquid and we are getting the alcoholic preparation so this is about the arista simply aristas are the fermented decoction it contains furthermore the sugar solution or the jaggery and whatever the formulation is there it is going to be fermented for 7 to 30 days right so during the fermentation there will be the formation of alcohol form the alcohol helps to extract the active principles or the active medicament from the powdered material then whatever the uh, mixture is there it is going to be clarified and it is being used as a arista for example ashoka arista arjuna arista dashamula arista then uh, draksha arista then uh, saraswata arista ashwagandha arista so the, there are so many uh, arista preparations are available in the market let us move towards the asavar so asavar it is uh, also known as the fermented infusion all of you are aware about the what is mean by the infusion there is a lot of difference in the decoction and the infusion right so according to shushruta asava is defined as the medication which is prepared by mixing together different kinds of medicinal juices jaggery and flowers of dhataki that is wood floridia fruticosa in an earthen vessel buried deep into heap of grains for flavoring and to initiate the fermentation same kind of the procedures are being used in the case of asava also but but these are the fermented infusion and whatever the things are there it is being fermented for at least 6 months and during this process there is a generation of the alcohol which helps to extract the active principle from the powdered material or from the fruit drug so asavas are also made by soaking a fruit drug either in a powder form or in the form of infusion so infusion is prepared in a solution of a sugar or jaggery to undergo fermentation in air tightened earthen jar furthermore we are we are adding the honey and uh, fermentation is done for the next 6 months thus it generates the alcohol and facilitates the extraction of the active ingredient contained in the drug forming alcohol preparation so for example draksha sava vasaka sava chandan sava loha sava and kumari sava these are the some of the examples of the asava arista and the asava these are the liquid preparation in ayurveda so arista these are the fermented decoction and asava these are the fermented infusion aristhas and asavas these are being used as a stimulant astringent stomachic and the tonic so this is about the aristhas and asavas how the arista and the asavas are being prepared let's see the general or traditional process how the aristhas and the asavas are being prepared so if you can see the slide very first step that is a storage of raw material whatever raw material is that it should be collected it should be properly stored then it should be properly evaluated then furthermore the grinding of raw material by using a suitable grinder then chipping of woody raw material if we are going for the woody material preparation of asavas and aristhas by using a woody material then furthermore need to chip or need to cut down uh, the woody material into the small pieces then pulverizing of the raw material in order to get the powder then uh, 
preparation of uh, infusions or decoction in the boiler in the case of decoction generally we are using the boiler and in the case of infusion just we are using the uh, jars or container then furthermore fermentation of the aristhas or asavas into the wooden container right for 76 months 7 days to 6 months then clarification of fermented liquid in the jar and finally we will get the product that is aristhas and asava so this is the traditional way by which it is possible to prepare the aristhas and the asava let us move towards the standardization of aristhas and the asava before dealing with the standardization there is a need to understand which ayurvedic parameters are being considered in the case of aristhas and asava so whatever the aristhas and asava are there they are the clear solution without froth clear solution without froth without any kind of the foam then it is having a pleasant aromatic odor which is due to generation of alcohol in the formulation then it should not have the sour taste then there should not be any kind of effervescent sound in the preparation then if there is any additive is there which is being uh, added into it it should sink to the bottom when we are placing the burning candle it is a uh, burn brightly when is placed in or just above the sadhana patra in which uh, we have placed the aristha or asava it is due to presence of alcohol in the formulation so these are the certain uh, ayurvedic parameters which needs to be uh, considered when we are going for the preparation of aristha or the asava let us move towards the standardization okay now we are aware about that that is aristhas these are the decoctions asavas these are the infusions so finally we are getting the product which is in a liquid form which is a clear which contains alcohol and whatever the active principles are there which are being extracted into the liquid right and whatever formulation is there see the in the, in the case of whole process already we have seen the traditional method and uh, we are keeping the material or formulation for the fermentation various other additives are also there in the formulation right and there is a need to standardize the particular uh, product so we have to suppose to consider in the case of standardization very first parameter that is the organoleptic property in the case of organoleptic properties we need to consider color odor test right needs to be considered then ph of formulation what ph actually we are getting for that purpose it is possible to use the ph meter then furthermore whatever obtained the product is there it should be evaluated for the foreign organic matter then ash value extractive values then the alcohol content already you have did the experiment in the laboratory then water soluble extractive then alcohol soluble extractive then total solids which are present in the formulation as this is a liquid formulation there is a need to measure the density or specific gravity of the formulation as this is a liquid formulation there is a need to perform the viscosity analysis then the surface tension and furthermore we should go for the tlc hptlc or gc profile of the formulation apart from these uh, there is a need to perform the chemical evaluation or uh, chemical analysis or phyto constituent analysis from the aristhas and asavas already we have seen the examples of the aristhas and asavas there are so many kinds of the aristhas and asavas are uh, being prepared and which is being uh, marketed so there is a need to perform the chemical evaluation of the prepared aristhas and asavas for the alkaloids for example by using a dagendorf test then presence of glycoside by using a molis test presence of pleonides uh, by using a pinoda test then presence of phenolic compound by using a lead acetate test then the presence of tannins by using a ferric chloride test presence of steroid by using a by using the salco bisky reaction then the amino acids minhydrin test and carbohydrate filling test or the phenetic test 
so we have to suppose to perform the preliminary phyto constituent evaluation for the prepared aristar and the asavar in order to understand which type of the chemical it is present in the arista or asavar apart from this you know that uh, we we are collecting the herbs from the various sources and and there is also farming is there there might be chances of uh, contamination of product during the processing or during the collection uh, there might be chances of contamination of the product with the microorganism then uh, with a certain heavy metals or there might be chances of some of the pesticides which are being present in the formulation as you know that all these things are going to be atomic and there is a need to uh, standardize and evaluate the product with respect to the pesticide residue then the heavy metals and the microbial count so in this way it is possible to standardize the asava and the aristha so aristha it is uh, simply you can say it as a decoction and asava it is a simply it's a infusion right so this is about the preparation and standardization of asava and the aristha let's move towards the next formulation that is known as the taila so taila these are the liquid oily preparation and uh, it contains the phyto constituents which are being extracted from the herb right so the tailas are prepared by boiling parts of vegetable drugs with the water milk or other liquid substances in order to uh, we, uh, we are preparing the decoction right and furthermore the oil is being added into it right which is being heated so whatever the active principles are there which are being extracted into the oil and that is known as the taila right so in this way the tailas are being prepared the boiling is continued until water is being uh, evaporated and generally tailas are used for the local application some of the tailas are given orally for example bringraj tel mahanarayana tel anu tel then jyotismati tela maybe you are knowing the common uh, homemade procedure uh, which are being used to prepare the hair oil maybe for example the maca oil it is it is being prepared in the home also we have supposed to collect some uh, maca from the raw sources which is being placed into the water right we have supposed to boil it for certain period of time then we have supposed to add uh, coconut oil into it whatever the water is there it should be evaporated so almost all active principles are there which are being extracted into the taila then furthermore the thing should be clarified and stored back so this is about the taila let us see how the standardization of tailas are being carried out there are so many parameters are there like organoleptic evaluation phytochemical evaluation then physical chemical parameters and chromatographic analysis in each and every case uh, we are going to discuss in the, the there there might be the small alterations in the standardization whatever the remaining procedures remaining things it it remains same it is not going to change so organoleptic evaluation like color odor texture smell appearance and clarity of the formulation then phytochemical evaluation whatever the tailas are there which are going to be evaluated for the tannins glycosides saponins phenolic compound alkaloids terpenoids steroids and flavonoids then physico chemical parameters like a specific gravity acid value saponification value iodine value peroxide value and the viscosity of the taila you may know that whatever the various oils are there there are certain values are uh, the, being listed and we have to suppose to perform all these uh, like the acid value saponification value iodine value or the peroxide value along with the specific gravity and the viscosity of the taila you know that the viscosity is being measured by using the viscometer then the specific gravity is being measured by using a specific gravity bottle apart from this there is a need to perform the chromatographic analysis these are the certain modern techniques for example tlc uv visible spectroscopy then the gas chromatography then hplc and the hptlc so these are the some of the modern techniques which are being utilized to standardize the taila 
might be you aware about the uh, brahmi oil isn't it which is being used to promote the hair growth again it is being prepared uh, it is a one one kind of ayurvedic formulation and which is being considered under the saila so this is about the saila how the sailas are being prepared and how these sailas uh, are being uh, standardized let us move towards the next preparation that is known as the churna so churnas are the powder formulation maybe in the modern dosage form you know the uh, powder then the granules which are being utilized to further more uh, preparation of uh, the tablets and capsules and so on in the same way in the ayurveda the solid dosage form churna it is uh, used it is a kind of uh, fine powder formulation of the drug so all these uh, herbs and other active ingredients are clean dried and powdered together in a modern process now we can use the modern equipment for the getting the powder certain pulverizers and so on so powder mixture is passed to the cloth or linen or sieve at least 80 ml so whatever we got the powder after grinding we have to suppose to pass it to the sieve number 80 so this is the way by which uh, we can get the churnas so in churnas when jaggery is to be used uh, it should be mixed with the equal quantity while if sugar is used it should be mixed with a double quantity of powder if we are going for the jaggery with a churna we should it should be mixed with the equal quantity and if we are going for the sugar it should be mixed with a double quantity of powder for example triphala chur which is available in the market then sudarshan chur then uh, trikatu chur then uh, drakshadi chur sitopatadi churna so churna these are the solid dosage form which is available in the powder form right and it's very simple to prepare and uh, formulate it sometimes along with the churna the jaggery or sugar it is being used let's move towards the standardization of churna so like other formulations there is a need to standardize the churnas also for example the churnas are going to be standardized with respect to organoleptic properties then the physico chemical properties then with respect to phyto constituents with respect to powder characteristics along with the ph heavy metals and microbial load so the organoleptic parameters like color odor taste it should be evaluated then the physico chemical properties like uh, moisture content total ash acid insoluble ash then the ether soluble ash then water soluble extractives alcohol soluble extractives and crude fiber content as all the churnas are available in the form of powder so there is a need to evaluate how much percent of moisture it is being present in the formulation along with the total ash acid insoluble ash ether soluble ash then the water soluble extractives then alcohol soluble extractives and crude fiber content apart from the physical chemical evaluation furthermore the churnas are should be evaluated for the presence of certain phyto constituents for example alkaloid glycoside tannins and so on then furthermore as this is a powder formulation uh, there is a need to perform the powder characteristics like uh, fineness bulk density tap density angle of repose hausner's ratio and the compressibility furthermore uh, we have to suppose to perform the we have to suppose to measure the ph of the formulation by preparing a 1% solution and lastly the presence of heavy metal and the microbial load in the churna as the raw materials are being uh, collected it is being processed so there might be chances of presence of certain heavy metals presence of certain pesticides and there might be the product which is going to be contaminated with the certain microorganism and hence it should then uh, there is a need to evaluate the churna with respect to heavy metal and the microbial load so this is about the how the churna are being prepared and how uh, the churna are being standardized then the little little variation is there in the standardization part whatever tastes are there it remains same only uh, there is a small change with respect to the type of formulation whether it is a liquid whether it is solid right according to that some evaluation parameters some standardization points are going to change 
let us move towards the basmat that is the preparation of basma and standardization of basma so basma it means ash simply which is obtained through incineration by burning we are getting the basma so the starter material undergo an uh, elaborate process of purification that is known as the shodhana followed by the reaction phase which involves the incorporation of some other mineral and the herbal extract so in the case of preparation of basma initial process start with the shodhana followed by reaction phase in which we are adding the minerals or the herbal extract then the material in a pellet form is incinerated in a furnace thereby we are getting the basma the visible the vegetable drugs are cut and burnt to form the ash the ashes of minerals are prepared from metals and these are purified by treating it with the oil fat free curd and cow urine if we are going for the ashes of minerals which are being prepared by using the metals furthermore it is uh, being purified by treating it with the oil fat and uh, cow urine then metallic powder masses is oxidized roasted and reduced to fine powder the examples that is the tamra basma the naga basma loh basma and mukta basma these are the some of the examples of the basma maybe all these basmas are available in the nano form right that is a very fine particle so let us see how these basmas are going to be standardized so in the case of standardization of basma uh, there is a need to go for the botanical authentication if we are going for the herb then foreign matter present in the that particular herb then organoleptic evaluation then macroscopic and microscopic evaluation then volatile matter present in it then the ash values extractive values chromatographic profile of the particular uh, herb then marker compound which is present in that then the pesticide residue then microbial count and the heavy metal contaminant in the case of organoleptic parameter there is a need to go for the sound color touch taste and odor in the case of physicochemical we have to supposed to perform the standardize the product with respect to ph acid value then acid insoluble ash furthermore as this is the solid dosage form there is a need to go for the powder size distribution furthermore it is uh, possible to use certain modern techniques for the standardization like x ray diffraction uv spectroscopy then inductively coupled plasma emission spectroscopy and atomic force microscopy apart from this there is a need to perform the microbial count and the presence of heavy metal so in this way the basmas are being uh, uh, standardized so this is about the basmas let us move towards the gutika so gutika are the preparations like a tablet so medicines are prepared in the form of tablets or pills they are known as vati or the gutika so these are made up of one or more drugs of a, which is a, derived from the plant animal or mineral origin so gutikas are being prepared by using the plant animal or the mineral origin they are same like a tablet so gutikas are prepared from decoction of fruit drugs and reduced to thick consistency initially we have to supposed to prepare the decoction so automatically the active principles are going to be extracted then thick slurry of this decoction is being prepared and furthermore it is uh, used for the preparation of the gutika then it is mixed with the powdered medicine raw sugar gum and the gugul in order to get the solid mass then furthermore honey is added to it and its pill mass are prepared see in a so many ayurvedic formulation we are going for the honey maybe the honey is having the ability to increase the bio availability of the certain active principles which are present in the ayurvedic formulation that's why always the honey it is being uh, used in the preparation of the ayurvedic formulation the mass is converted into the pill pipes and finally into the gutikas for example 
Lasunadi Gutika, then uh, Pranda Gutika, then uh, Khadiradi Gutika. So these are the some of the examples of the Gutikas. As you know, the Gutikas, these are the solid dosage form like a tablet. So there is a need to standardize these Gutikas with respect to organoleptic parameters, then preliminary phytochemical evaluation, then physicochemical evaluation, along with the heavy metals and uh, microbiological assay. So in the case of uh, organoleptic parameters, we should perform the color texture order test, test and uh, pH. In the preliminary phytochemical investigation, we have to supposed to go for flavonoids, tannins, alkaloids, glycosides, terpenoids, steroids, globatannin, phenolic compounds, and the saponins. There are various tests are available. And with the help of these tests, it is possible to get the idea about the, which type of phyto chemical constituent present in the particular butica. And furthermore, it is being confirmed by using the chromatographic analysis like uh, HPTLC, UV, or the CC. Then physicochemical evaluation. Furthermore, uh, it should be evaluated for the bulk density, tap density, compressibility index, Hausner ratio, ash value, hardness, friability, and uh, disintegration. Apart from these, as you know that uh, these butikas are being prepared uh, by using the certain herbs or plant material, animal source material or mineral origin. So there is a need to go for the heavy metals as well as the pesticides. And finally, uh, one should perform the microbial count which is present in the butika. So this is about the butikas, how the butikas are being prepared and how the butikas are being standardized. Let us move towards the leha. It is also known as the avaleha or the leha. It is a semi-solid preparation of drug containing the extract of drug. So leha, it is the semi-solid formulation which contains the extract of drug. These are being prepared by boiling prescribed drug juices and it is strained. Then furthermore, again, it is boiled with the jaggery or sugar or sugar candy until soft thick consistency is formed. So simply here, in the case of avaleya or leya, the drug extracts are being prepared. Then they are going to be boiled with the uh, whatever the these extracts are there. They are going to be boiled, and furthermore, uh, the jaggery and uh, sugar it is being added, and again it is going to be a uh, boiled in order to get the soft consistent right when jaggery is to be used it should be mixed with a double quantity of drug and if sugar is used it should be mixed with a four times of a drug if honey is required it is added in the preparation when it is cold right these preparations are used as a tonic also as a Digestive troubles as well as the respiratory problems. For example, Chavan Prash, then uh, Utaka Valeha, then Draksha Avaleha, then Vasa Avaleha, then Bilva Zileha, and Turna Valeha. These are the some of the examples of the Leha. So they have, these are the semi-solid formulation for internal use, right? Whatever the drug is there, it is being extracted. Then furthermore, the sugar, jaggery, or sugar candy is being added into it in order to convert it into the semi-solid mass, right? If we want to use the honey, when the product is cooled at that particular time, we have to supposed to add the honey into the leha preparation. Let us see how the leha preparations are going to be standardized. The very first one that is the organoleptic character. It should be standardized with respect to color order test. It should be standardized with respect to loss on drawing, then ash value, acid insoluble ash, then alcohol soluble extractives and water soluble extractives, then a pH of formulation, TLC and HPTLC, then presence of heavy metal, pesticides, and the microbial load. So these are the some of the Standardization parameters for the leha preparation. So leha preparation, it is a semi-solid. For example, H1 class. So let us see 
the standardization of ionic dosage form. Very first thing in the standardization, as you know that various herbal materials which we are using to prepare the Ayurvedic formulations or the dosage form. The very first parameter which needs to be considered that is the taxonomical estimation. Or you can say that simply authentication of drugs material. Once we have collected the material, there is a need to authenticate the particular raw material. The second parameter which needs to be considered under the standardization, that is the organoleptic or sensory evaluation. That is, we are going to evaluate the product related with the color, odor, appearance, then powder particle size distribution, powder flow, clarity. These are the sum of the parameters which needs to be evaluated under the organoleptic evaluation. Color, odor, test, appearance, particle size, powder flow and the clarity. If it is so, depending on the type of dosage form which we are evaluating or the standardizing. Furthermore, the identity dosage form should be standardized with respect to foreign matter. As you know that there are various ways are there by which we are collecting the raw material for the preparation of the Ayurvedic dosage form. There are so many processes are there, isn't it? And during these processes or during the collection of the herb, there might be chances of incorporation or invasion of the sum of the material into the dosage form or the formulation. And that's why the particular Ayurvedic dosage form, it needs to be evaluated for the foreign matter like a foreign plant, own plant, other plant and the mineral. Okay. Then let us see the microscopic evaluation. The microscopic evaluation, it is furthermore divided into the qualitative evaluation and the quantitative evaluation. Maybe you have gone through all these uh, evaluation parameters earlier in the pharmacognosis. Same thing here also we are using for the standardization purpose. Say for example, in the case of uh, qualitative microscopic evaluation, the product or the thing should be evaluated with respect to palisade ratio, when islet number, when termination number, stomatal index and the stomatal number. These are the things which needs to be considered under the qualitative evaluation. Whereas, in the case of quantitative evaluation, we should perform the, we should go for the lycopodium spore count method, then presence of starch grain, then calcium oxalate mixture. So these are the things which needs to be considered under the microscopic evaluation. Let us see the physicochemical evaluation of the dosage. The type and nature of the dosage form, Ayurvedic dosage form, as you know, it might be solid, semi-solid, liquid, and so on. Depending on that, we have to suppose to consider the physicochemical evaluation of the particular Ayurvedic formulation. Say, for example, pH of the formulation, it should be determined by using the pH meter. If we are preparing the Ayurvedic tablets, it needs to be evaluated for the disintegration time, then the probability, hardness. If we are preparing any of the suspension in the Ayurvedic preparation, it should be evaluated for the sedimentation rate. Furthermore, the preparation should be evaluated for the solubility and the viscosity related with the liquid and the semi-liquid or semi-solid preparation. So these are the Certain physicochemical parameter needs to be considered under the standardization of Ayurvedic dosage. Furthermore, the ash values are there and uh, the product should be evaluated for the ash value. It might be related with the evaluation of raw material 
or it may be may be related with the evaluation of finished product for example total ash acid insoluble ash water soluble ash and the sulfated ash if you want a particular procedure you should go through the reference book you will get the procedures for all these uh, tests then the extractive values like the water soluble extractive value ethanol soluble extractive value and the ether soluble extractive values should be determined in order to standardize the ayurvedic dosage form then oil related value as you know that there are various oils are there which have been used in the various ayurvedic dosage form and they are having these oils are having the certain values or numbers or index and it should be determined related with the oil related value like a saponification matter then acid value ester value right these things should be considered apart from these things we should also consider the swelling index for the carbohydrate when the material or the preparation contains certain carbohydrate then if it contains the saponins one should go for the foaming index if it is a solid or semi liquid in nature we should determine the melting range if any kind of the specific uh, material present in the ayurvedic formulation needs to be further evaluated for the optical rotation right so these things should be considered under the oil related value apart from these uh, evaluation there are certain uh, modern analytical tools are available with us in order to standardize the preparation say for example tlc and hptlc that is a thin layer chromatography and high performance uh, thin layer chromatography that is hptl then hplc high performance liquid chromatography then uh, ultraviolet spectroscopy then gas chromatography mass spectroscopy and the fluidity so these are the things that things related with the chromatographic evaluation apart from these things we have the option to go for the afm then scm then uh, cryo dem then xrd then dsc so these are the some other analytical tools which are available with us along with the proton nmr and the 13c nmr right so these things should be considered under the standardization of ayurvedic dosing related with the pharmacological parameters that is biase to estimate potency when should the evaluate the product with respect to bitterness astringent activity antimicrobial activity hemolytic activity antioxidant activity nitric oxide scavenging activity then uh, so many other pharmacological activities are there and it needs to be evaluated for the particular dosage form say for example immunomodulator activity then the safety that is a toxicological evaluation of the product it should be performed with respect to limit test pesticide content heavy metal then aflatoxin radioactive contamination bio burden and pathogenic and non pathogenic microorganism presence of pathogenic and non pathogenic microorganism so these are the some uh, standardization parameter for the ayurvedic dosage form so here we we have finished the preparation and standardization of ayurvedic formulation so in this session we have discussed the introduction to ayurveda history of ayurveda principles of ayurveda diagnosis in ayurveda treatment in ayurveda branches of ayurveda and the last point which we have discussed that is the preparation and standardization of ayurvedic formulation